Oh, the Starship is indeed the most extraordinary spacecraft in the world. It not only dominates in terms of size and power, but what makes it even more special is its unique ground system designed for assembly, launch, and recovery. As rocket enthusiasts, we have had high expectations for the epic Starship recovery demonstration during the upcoming orbital launch of Starship. Particularly the scene of Mechazilla catching Starship, a moment that seemed like it could only happen in sci-fi movies. But the reality is different. SpaceX's decision for Starship is to have it descend directly into the sea. To explain this, let's dive into this a bit more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Being a company with a tradition of embracing failures and swiftly iterating, SpaceX managed to accomplish 80% of the improvements within just three months following the setback caused by the explosion of Starship 24. They're even poised to return to the skies once again later this year. With this second integrated launch of the Starship, the duo B-9 and Ship-25 will continue along the unfinished path of B-7 and Ship-24. Starship set to launch from the Star Base in Texas located on the U.S. Gulf Coast. The engines of Booster 9 were anticipated to propel it to an orbital velocity of approximately 28,000 kilometers an hour, enabling a controlled and smooth landing in the sea. The last stretch of terrestrial terrain that Starship's projected to traverse is Indonesia before venturing over the expansive horizons of the Pacific Ocean and eventually re-entering the Earth's atmosphere near Hawaii. The distance to the nearest island in Hawaii is 62 miles or 100 kilometers. Musk tweeted that this would be three-quarters of the way around the Earth and that observers would be farther apart than the usual 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers. The entire flight is expected to conclude approximately 90 minutes after liftoff. After that, Starship makes its descent and touches down on the water's surface that has no landing pad and no one to catch it. Why let Starship fall into the ocean instead of catching it with Mechazilla? The decision to opt for a splashdown landing for SpaceX's orbital Starship mission stands in stark contrast to the company's track record of triumphant landings achieved with previous ventures. SpaceX has gained acclaim for its adeptness at gently touching down Falcon 9 first stage rockets on their landing legs since 2015 and even accomplishing the delicate feat with the massive Starship prototype at the Starbase Texas facility. This peculiar departure from routine might raise eyebrows considering SpaceX's established proficiency in pinpoint landings. There are several good reasons for this decision, though. If you're wondering why spaceships in orbit aren't trying to land on a Starbase in Texas, let's clear up the first and most important reason for this, which is, of course, human safety. One of the tests is a belly flop maneuver, which involves the spacecraft flipping over and re-entering the Earth's atmosphere with its belly facing down. This allows for a controlled descent and landing similar to how a skydiver would land. To simulate the conditions of this maneuver, SpaceX has decided to drop the Starship into the sea. This then allows them to test the spacecraft's ability to control its descent and landing, along with its structural integrity when subjected to forces of re-entry. This is because the orbital landing test flights didn't start with nearly straight up and down trajectories like the first prototype test flights did. Even those trajectories were much more difficult than those of the engines when the spacecraft was flying sideways and using full orbital speed. To be on the safe side of re-entry, you need to re-enter the atmosphere somewhere on the other side of the ocean. If something goes wrong, it'll cause problems for the experimental spacecraft with the following experimental systems. Thus, this new thermal projection will put us in the same position that we found ourselves in during 2003 at the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster, where spacecraft barrels have leaked all over the U.S. We don't want that to happen again, and where they'll try to dismantle the orbital spaceship prototype after flying apparently well thought out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The rotating part of the plane passes over the ocean on a trajectory that ensures all the debris will fall into the ocean if something goes wrong. The splash points at a safe distance, but still very close to the Hawaiian island of Kauai. Since Hawaii is actually part of the U.S., SpaceX can salvage the spacecraft and study the solid debris to gather potentially valuable information. Furthermore, the wisdom behind opting for a water landing for Starship encompasses more than merely averting human impact and collecting data. The nurturing embrace of water offers a gentle cushion, a welcoming medium that absorbs a significant portion of the impact forces. It's the secret behind the concept of a soft landing. Hence, when Starship descends into the sea, should the descent be controlled and guided, it's nearly certain that the structural integrity of the Starship will remain largely intact, enabling SpaceX to swiftly facilitate its recovery. 
The innate softness of the ocean functions akin to a natural shock absorber, shielding the spacecraft from the unyielding forces of reentry. Another pivotal reason SpaceX refrains from catching Starship mid-air akin to Mechazilla is tied to the preservation of ground infrastructure safety. Candidly speaking, Starship remains within the realm of experimentation, necessitating further tests before it aligns with Elon's envisioned blueprint. The consequences would be remarkably perilous if they were to attempt mid-air capture during the first launch, be it the first, second, or even third attempt. For instance, any additional hardware surrounding the launch pad could experience substantial setbacks if compromised. It's fair to say that perhaps SpaceX's confidence in landing Falcon 9 prompted several iterations where both vehicles autonomously navigated a shared path using grid fins and thrust vectors, ensuring their return to the landing site. However, there's little doubt that Starship's an entirely different beast, a behemoth that's bound to yield surprises. Just consider the inaugural launch of Starship with Super Heavy ignited by the fiery combustion of 33 Raptor engines, generating nearly 17 million pounds of thrust, resulting in a considerable excavation of the launch pad. Additionally, SpaceX is exploring the augmentation of engine thrust to nearly 19 million pounds. This staggering magnitude is truly terrifying. So what happens if complications come up? To what extent could damages manifest, especially given the colossal mass of Super Heavy upon touchdown? When it's near vacant interior, except for a small amount of remaining propellant specifically reserved for landing birds, in my perspective, the most significant apprehension pertains to the possibility of the boosters veering off course and causing irreparable destruction to the launch tower or gantry. With its tremendous velocity and substantial mass upon descent, it holds the potential for grave, insurmountable damage. It's a shame to see the tower destroyed this way, even though SpaceX has got a second spacecraft tower over in Florida. But let's think positively when SpaceX doesn't undertake the catching effort. The launch will still be pretty impressive, and they're not lacking any other ships to fully execute their dream plan. SpaceX is doing what other companies can't. It's called rapid prototyping. At any given time, building a product prototype will cost more than the final product itself. Even if it's only an estimated production design, it originates from a physical representation that can be processed, tested, and evaluated. However, if it fails, it has to be reworked and redesigned. The time and cost to build something else are generally quite high. Currently, creating models quickly and inexpensively poses a challenge for companies in the industry. Employing multiple models has become a practical step in the product development process. The ability to iteratively build and modify a prototype reduces overall design time. Nevertheless, this is still an experiment, and there's always two potential outcomes, success or failure. That's why, with SpaceX's current capabilities, what they need is time for refinement, to test everything to perfection, and to be ready to unlock new possibilities for space. Despite the potential risks, the second launch of Starship remains a crucial step in the development process of the Starship spacecraft. And that's it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below because your feedback is very important to us and ultimately helps us make better videos for you to watch. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.